This technical training videotape is designed to familiarize you with oscilloscope operation to measure DC and AC signals. You will find the accompanying technical training manual a valuable resource as you view this videotape. Please consult it often. I'm Professor Richard Kent and I'll be your instructor. And I'm Janie Kent. I'll be the instructor's assistant. For the next hour or so, we'll provide you with detailed technical content that will teach you the fundamentals of using an oscilloscope. There are safety-related issues you need to be concerned about before operating the oscilloscope. Do not use it if it appears to be damaged in any way. Caution, there is an electrical shock hazard when operating electronic test equipment. Particularly use extreme caution when working around voltages greater than 60 volts DC or 30 volts RMS and never operate the oscilloscope or other instruments in flammable atmospheres. Also, never exceed the input voltage rating to the oscilloscope. It could place you and the scope in harm's way. Always connect the oscilloscope to an AC supply voltage that matches the voltage requirements of the instrument. You can find this information out on the back of the oscilloscope itself. You should always use the proper power cord, preferably the one supplied with the instrument, or at least obtain a suitable replacement. And never defeat the ground prong on the AC power plug. Also, never use cheater plugs. You'll put yourself at risk for a shock. Always use a properly grounded AC outlet, and never cut the ground prong off the AC line cord. Never connect the scope to equipment where the chassis presents a voltage relative to the ground. In most installations, the entry cable contains a ground wire that's connected to the service panel. This is the actual building ground. A ground rod is often used to establish a good ground. The service panel chassis is connected to the utility ground and the building ground. All outlets are fed off the panel and are thereby connected to this ground point. Hot chassis TV receivers are examples of electronic equipment using transformless designs. Use extreme caution at all times and preferably an isolation transformer as illustrated here. Note there is no ground connection. In this case, it is acceptable to use a cheater plug since the float is provided by the transformer. Caution, never expose the instrument to water. This can create a serious shock hazard. Electricity and water simply don't mix. Use extreme caution when working around machinery, especially where moving parts are present. Test probes and leads can get entangled, causing the possibility of strangling to you and damage to the instrument. The rule is keep everything in the clear. Remember, keep safety as your first concern. The front panel of an oscilloscope appears to be a very intimidating instrument to operate. Starting from the left, we have the actual main oscilloscope screen, which consists of a cathode ray tube in the case of an analog scope and we have various beam controls as well as power controls. The oscilloscope we're featuring in this training video is a dual trace model therefore it has two vertical input channels a channel A and a channel B. The ability to display two signals simultaneously is met with ease with instruments of this caliber. As you see from a close examination of the front panel there are a multitude of controls, knobs, and switches necessary to properly display a signal on the graticule. We'll concentrate on some of the basic functions first, working into more advanced aspects of the oscilloscope at a later time in the tape. We'll learn later in this program that each vertical channel has its own position and vertical attenuator controls, as well as its own unique BNC input. On the right side of the oscilloscope, we see the horizontal section of the oscilloscope. Here we'll find the horizontal position or X position control as well as the horizontal sweep rate control which is used to set the beam sweep speed. Let's begin by powering up the instrument. Every model has its own unique features for powering up the instrument so consult your operating manual now. The particular model oscilloscope we're using here also has a backlight display which is adjustable by means of a potentiometer. The intensity control allows you to increase or decrease trace brightness. This is especially useful when working under varied ambient lighting situations. Rotating the intensity control clockwise increases trace brightness, while rotating it counterclockwise decreases it. You'll always want to select the minimum intensity needed for accurate measurements and to protect the CRT's phosphors from burning. 
You can then adjust the focus control for the sharpest trace possible. Keeping the trace focused will help you make razor sharp measurements. Especially when setting up the instrument for the first time, you might have to trim the trace rotation a bit. An ordinary alignment tool makes this an easy job. Trace rotation is usually performed once and then forgotten. The coupling switch selects either AC or DC coupling. The ground switch effectively decouples the vertical input signal from the scope circuitry. This is particularly useful for setting the trace reference. Always make sure the calibrate or cal control is turned to the calibrate position. This control is usually located on the vertical attenuator control. Serious measurement errors can occur if you fail to set this control properly. Most vertical attenuator vernier controls have a click indent position so the operator knows when cal is activated. Both channel A and channel B have identical vertical position controls. The function of the vertical position control is to set the vertical position of the trace on the graticule. In the case of dual trace oscilloscopes, the vertical position of each trace can be set independently. On multiple channel oscilloscopes, such as four channel scopes, each vertical input has its own vertical position control. Note the smooth operation of the vertical position controls. This is indicative of a quality instrument that allows the operator to properly place the trace at any point on the screen. Depending upon the type of measurements being conducted, it may be necessary to position the trace reference at the top of the screen rather than at the bottom or center. For basic measurements, centering the trace at zero reference in the center of the screen is a good place to begin. I can't stress enough, you must check, check, and recheck that the vertical attenuator vernier control is in the cal position, otherwise measurement accuracy will be seriously compromised. Most dual trace oscilloscopes allow the operator to select between alternate and chop modes for dual trace measurements. The alternate mode is preferred for high frequency signals, while CHOP is best for viewing slower waveforms. Here we see two traces being displayed on the same graticule simultaneously. Unfortunately, because the phosphor is of one color only, it's difficult to distinguish which one is channel A and which one is channel B. This is where measurement operator skills come into play. We can see here that each trace is independently positionable on the screen. Each vertical amplifier of the dual trace oscilloscope has its own BNC input connector. These BNC connectors are where you'll connect oscilloscope probes or test leads for making measurements. You'll note that each BNC connector is located typically beneath the vertical attenuator control for the respective channel. You should note that the vertical inputs share a common ground connection through the scope's chassis. Therefore, the ground of channel A is the same potential as that of channel B or the case ground of the instrument and the power line ground for the building. This is why it's so important to know the type of measurements you're getting into before actually taking them. Otherwise, you could place yourself at risk as well as the instrument by connecting the ground of the scope, which is ultimately connected to the building ground, across a live line that is referenced to ground. The vertical attenuator control functions much like the range switch of a volt ohm milliamp meter. Both channels operate in identical fashions and allow the operator to select different vertical input sensitivities for each channel. Here the technician is verifying that the vertical attenuator vernier control is in the calibrate position. The horizontal position or X position control allows the operator to move the trace either to the left or to the right of the screen. A good place to start is with the control in the centered position. The horizontal sweep rate control or time base selector allows the technician to choose a horizontal sweep rate for the beam. In the case of this 50 megahertz scope, 